Hi guys, John here, and today I want to talk with you about a new fabric pool feature that became available in ONTAP 9.5, the tiering fullness threshold. The feature itself has existed since we launched fabric pool back in 9.2, but it wasn't customizable until now. Most people won't need to use it, but for those of you that do, it's a big help. So let me show you how the tiering fullness threshold works. Here we have our standard cluster, all flash, high performance, and we're using fabric pool to tier cold data to the cloud. Our active data stays on flash, where it can take advantage of ultra low latency and massive throughput, and our inactive data gets tiered to an object store where it's far less expensive to store it. We do this by attaching an SSD aggregate to a bucket, that's just the endpoint in the object store. We set volume tiering policies, in general the default snapshot only, but more and more people are setting auto where they can tier everything that's like cold or inactive to somewhere where it's going to be less expensive. And then profit, you know, boom, we just reclaim, you know, upwards of 50% of, you know, SSD capacity. Um, that's SSD capacity that we've already paid for that was doing nothing. Um, okay, to be fair, it, it was doing something. It was storing cold data. But cold data, you know, inactive data gets no benefit from being on flash. So let's move it somewhere else and free up that capacity for active applications. But sometimes, you know, things don't go as planned. Um, and that's almost always due to the aggregate not being full enough. Um, maybe you're in a new cluster and there just isn't very much data, or maybe you have you know, large 800 terabyte aggregates and you have a lot of data, but you haven't hit that 50% um, threshold. Um, so by default, um, the tiering fullness threshold um, is gonna tier to the cloud only if the performance tier aggregate is at least 50% full. There's little reason to tier cold data to the cloud um, if the performance tier is being underutilized. The idea was that if you have all this extra capacity, there's no need to tier it, um, especially if that means you get another bill when you do so, which is probably going to happen when you're tiering this to a, you know, a public object store. Um, so here's an example. We have hot data in orange. We have you know, inactive data in blue. Um, it still hasn't crossed 50%, um, and so no tiering is going to take place. Um, so for 9.2 through 9.4, you know, this is exactly how it works. Um, it was a one-size-fits-all solution, and it made sense for most environments, but, but not all of them. So we got requests from customers that, you know, it didn't make sense for their use cases, and we listened to them, and we made changes, and now in 9.5, the tiering fullness threshold is customizable. So you can change the percentage at which, you know, we're going to check that aggregate at. So setting the threshold to a lower number will reduce the amount of data that's required to be stored on the performance tier before tiering takes place. This is great for customers that want to tier their cold data as soon as possible, or for environments that have extremely large aggregates that contain very little hot or you know, active data. So here we have you know, a fair chunk of hot data and very little cold data, but at tw as soon as this ever crosses 20% on this aggregate, we're going to start tiering it. So for this use case, they just wanted to evacuate cold data as rapidly as possible. Maybe they're expecting a lot of hot data uh, very soon. Um, likewise, you know, the, the reverse, you know, the flip side is, is another solution. So here we're setting the threshold to a higher number, and that's going to increase the amount of data required to be stored on the performance tier before tiering takes place. This is useful for solutions that are designed to tier only when the aggregate is near maximum capacity. So we have other customers where they're like, hey, I wanna, I'm okay having cold data on my SSDs. Um, I just want to move it over there when I get close to you know, the threshold. Um, and so that's how this works. We set that number high, and it's, we're going to basically use tiering as kind of like a safety valve here, where we tier to always preserve capacity on, on that aggregate. Um, again, all of this is customizable using the tiering fullness threshold. Um, we use this in CLI. Um, it is an advanced um, feature, so we have to go in and you know, set privilege advanced if you haven't already done so. And then you know, storage aggregate, object store modify, and then we're just going to call out the aggregate and then call out the tiering fullness threshold, the, the percentage. Again, set it low if you want to tier you know, rapidly, set it to a higher number if you want to fill up that aggregate before you do tiering. And then what it looks like is you know, pretty much the same. We're going to attach the SSD aggregate to a bucket. We set our volume tiering policies, um, and then we now have the option in 9.5 to change the tiering fullness threshold. Not everyone needs to do this, 
Um, but if you do want to, you know, and it makes sense for your environment, now you have the option to do so in 9.5. Now, you know, now you can profit. You know, you're not going to get stuck with, you know, this aggregate that's, that's not tearing anything because, you know, there, there's very little data in that. Um, and that's pretty much how you change the tearing fullness threshold in ONTAP 9.5. If you like this video, please be sure to click the like button below and subscribe to see more. Thanks for watching.